It's not the body that needs a, a little warm up or a start up, it's actually the brick. So what you could also do is just close your eyes, slow down and begin to become aware of your breath. You don't even need to change it. It's just an awareness practice at the moment where you just give yourself a little bit of time to notice the breath and to wind down every part of your body. Just slow everything down as much as you can. So glad you could join me. It's something that would keep my own practice going now over the next few weeks. The fact that I'm getting on the mat with people makes it so much easier to do it. And I think the nice thing about um, having you guys with me in this particular class this evening is that I know everybody who has joined in. So I know the group in the class this evening, which is lovely. So I'm kind of picturing you as you might be following me. Hi everyone. I won't name any names. But I know you're out there. And we are ready to roll. So let's lie back. You could use a little pillow for your head. You don't need to. Just find a comfortable position where when you lie back, you know your body is on a wind down. You know you can get into a deep relaxation position. That could be knees bent or legs straight out. It's your decision, it's your body, it's exactly what you feel is right for you this evening. I want you to shrug your shoulders around a little bit. Move your head left to right. Have your hands around your lower tummy, somewhere lower than your ribs anyway, somewhere down there. And just notice the breath as it comes and goes from the lower part of your body, the tummy part. What you might notice is that there isn't much breath going down there initially. You might notice more rib cage movement, more spring of the ribs out to the side and back in again, up or down. There's no wrong way to breathe here. All we're doing right now is we are taking a short moment in our day to notice. Relax the jaws. Soften the tongue in your mouth. Relax your neck. Allow the weight of the head to lean onto whatever you're on. Could be a pillow, could be the mat, could be the floor. And after softening so many things there above, the rib cage above the lungs, we're now going to send our breath a little bit deeper. So we're sending the breath down into the area underneath your hands on your tummy. So it's a low, deep breath. You don't have to force it too much. You don't have to hold your breath. This is a system of breathing or a technique where you're stretching everything on the inside of your body in that vital area where your tummy is, your intestines are, where your liver is. And you have this big artery and vein going down through the diaphragm, big breathing muscle underneath your lungs. So when you take a deep breath like that, it can create a ripple effect across your entire body in terms of relaxation and just signaling relaxation to every part of your body, which is a great way to start a practice where you need to concentrate on yourself. Now we'll start moving around our toes, our fingers a little bit, rolling around the wrists, 
rolling around the ankle joints. And what you're trying to go for here is like, if you think there are any clicks or cracks or stiff parts in those joints, try and wake them up and kind of, I want to say unclick them, but like let them click if they're going to click. Loosen that stuff out, it's not bad, it's okay. Now interlace your fingers and take one knee up towards your tummy and just give it a good stretch in there. The other leg can just stretch out straight if that suits you. And we'll just change over. And then we'll take two knees up together and just give a little movement of your body side to side. And the purpose of that is to give your back a massage. What you might notice now is if you had a late dinner, <laughs> this position is a bit tough because you're kind of squashing your tummy a little bit, but just back off it if that's the case. Okay, legs, both of them up to the ceiling. And we'll rub the backs of the legs, backs of the hamstrings in particular. Just give them a little bit of a rub. The rub is really to stimulate the muscles and to get the nerves that are within the muscles kind of alert because we're going to come for them. We're going to stretch them out a little deeper in a while. So this is just a little taster stretch having the legs in that position. The knees can be bent, they don't have to be straight or anything like that. Now cross one foot over your thigh for a glute stretch and we put our hands, our arms around the underneath thigh. There are options here. You can, if that feels comfortable enough to you, you could get your hands around your knee or your shin or if you were in that position you thought that's not that great for me, you'll just drop down the legs to touch the floor, similar to what I'm doing there. So play it by ear and just see what works for you best. The main place to be feeling a stretch is on the other, the, the hip of the leg that you've crossed over. So that's the one really to pay attention to. While we're doing this, remind your jaws to relax, the tongue in your mouth to relax and the neck muscles to relax. They often kick in here and kind of hold your head up or you know, strain some way, so switch those guys off and we'll do the opposite side. Crossing one foot over your thigh, wrapping the arms around the back of the thigh, shin, or maybe you're just keeping that foot on the floor. Again, it's a case of try and see. And uh, we're going slow here, just at the very start, just to kind of settle up ourselves into it. Easy stuff initially. Not this one though. This one's not too easy and this one's going to be a bit of a killer if you did have a late dinner. But we'll do it and we'll get it over with just to switch on our tummy muscles. I want your knees now over your hips. So your knees are apart from each other, the same width as your hips. And the shins are vertical, horizontal, sorry. Imagine you could put a tray up on top of those shins, point the toes up to the ceiling and put your hands back on your tummy. Now, what I find quite interesting here is if you poke in there, poke to the tummy, you'll feel the hardness, the shape of the muscle in there. It's there. Feel it. Admire it. It's working pretty hard to hold your legs in this position. And I want you to reach your arms up to the ceiling now. This is known as a dead bug position in Pilates or yoga, just maintaining this. But what I'd like you to do as a very detailed part of this movement is take a belly breath. All the way in and all the way out. Now I want you thinking about your lower back. Where is it at? Is it completely arched off the mat? Is it completely flat to the mat? The place you want that lower back is in a position so that a little ladybird could be under there, but not much else. You would want a little mouse shape crawling around there. Sometimes you have to push your lower back towards the mat to get that exact position. Now drop the legs down, take the two knees to one side, arms to the other, and it usually feels pretty good after that. Sometimes you might even hear or feel a little click or crack somewhere in the spine when you're on the move there. All good. Let's go to the opposite side. Knees go one way, arms go the other, head goes wherever it wants to go, and just enjoy the big shape, the big opening twist. It's quite a big bit of space you're giving your body there. And when you think about what you might have been doing for the day and you look at these positions, all of them should be kind of taking you out of your typical day-to-day -day position. Great. 
Gentle groin stretch now, back to the center of the mat, feet together, knees apart. To get a, a slight shoulder stretch here, you could place the arms just at the sides of your body with the elbows bent at 90 degrees and the backs of the hands would be on the mat or on the floor. Feet are together, knees are apart, so it's quite a big kind of open posture but it's a nice one for the shoulders. Here's what I just want you thinking about again, just going into a little bit more detail. And this is the physio side of things. What's your back doing when your body goes like this? Like mine is completely arched off the mat now, as I say it, but I wanted the spine to be a little bit closer to the mat. So just gently begin to work the spine towards the mat and you will feel a much bigger groin stretch primarily kind of kicking off there. So. If that feels good for you, do it. If you feel like it's too intense, it's, it's no problem to just hang out and be where you're at. So it's just a bit of play with movement and there are small little details, things that you barely see, but stuff you can kind of feel from the inside. Pressing back to the mat, you could try it again, see how it feels for you. The other thing to try here is uh, pressing the soles of your feet together. That can create a much more intense experience, a bigger stretch, without having to kind of huff and puff or sweat or anything like that. Hopefully no one's huffing and puffing or sweating too much yet. We're just getting into it. All right, then knees together. Hug your knees back up to your tummy and massage that back by moving a little bit side to side. We're going to be off our backs now in a moment, so just give yourself a good old Roll around there, roll around the shoulders. If the socks are on, now is a perfect time just to peel them off and stretch out the toes a little bit, wiggle them around. And let's bring it to child's pose at the very back of the mat. So anyway at all, move yourself around, move back to the back of the mat and get yourself into child's pose. So that's where you're on your hands and knees, you relax the feet and move your bum back towards your heel, stretch out the arms straight ahead of you. Now where your head goes is just dependent on how happy your neck and head is in terms of where it likes to be. You could have the head, hands underneath your head like I'm doing two little fists and you could put your forehead on those fists or you could have the head all the way down to the floor. But this isn't really a head exercise. This is an exercise for your spine. So no matter where your head is at, what we want to do is create a little bit of space at the back of our body. Let's send our breath into the back line of the body. We were breathing into the belly when you were lying on your back. So now we're kind of reversing that pressure. You might feel a fairly big stretch in the spine when you breathe that way, when you send your breath to the spine. You might also feel like the skin at your back stretches a little bit. And often there's a want to stretch the shoulders up a little bit. So a few options. You could have the arms straight out ahead of you with the hands on the floor, elbows off the floor. Or something that I find is really nice, especially if you've had a busy day or any bit of stress or strain on the upper body. What you want to do is then bring the hands just to your sides. Fingertips are on the floor. Elbows are off the floor. My head is off the floor. And you start scooping and rolling those shoulders around in all sorts of weird and wonderful movements. So, do whatever feels better. If it felt better for you to lengthen out your arms, go for it. If you think, you know what now, this gives me way more relief now than that position, this is what you would do. Scooping and rolling. You can move your neck any way that you want. But what we want to do is kind of get those muscles, the shoulders, the upper body, just move. That's the secret. Keep them going. Don't let them get stuck or gritty or stiff in any direction. All right, slide the hands forward now. We're going to lie on our tummy. And when you lie on your tummy, bring your knees together. Point your toes, touch the toes. And with the hands down on the mat, elbows in at your sides, press the feet into the mat and inhale up into the cobra. Exhale, push back to downward dog or child's pose. So child's pose is where you were. Downward dog, your hips would be lifted. You call it, you decide. And then we're moving forward on the mat and lying down on our tummy again. Let's take a breath in, press the feet firmly into the mat, lift your chest as a little cobra. 
You might push back to child's pose or a downward dog. Your decision, it's your practice. You know what's best for you. Moving forwards again. And we're going to lower all the way down to the ground. And just one more lap, one more round of that. This time, curl the toes under behind you. Inhale, lift up into a little cobra. Move back to child's pose or downward dog. You call it. Decide what feels good. And then we're moving forward. So we might be in plank at this stage or we might be in all fours. So it doesn't matter. Just be in a forwards position, whichever one it is. Whatever one you've chosen, you're now going to move your left foot forwards to the front of the mat. Drop down your right knee if you need to. Left foot comes up front. And we're going to come up. Now, when you're getting settled into this position, a low lunge position, often balance can be a little bit challenged. So just to make the best of our position, what you could do is double check that the back foot is directly behind the back knee. If it has moved into the middle of the mat, you might need to change that to help your balance. Make sure the back knee is comfy. And then pop your hands on your hips. Notice how your left hip is higher than your right at the moment. Can you drop the left hip a little bit? Tuck down the backside and the tailbone a little bit. You could think about pulling the pubic bone up to your belly button here. And make sure if you can, your head is positioned over your heart, your heart positioned over the pelvis. So with this nice long straight line in our bodies, hands will come to your heart center. This might challenge the balance a little bit more and now we're gonna to turn to the left. So it's a spinning rotational movement of your spine. The left elbow now is basically sticking out to the wall behind you. Palms are gently pressing in together and we're gonna release the arms out so that the arms are at the same height as the shoulders. If you can, try closing the eyes here. It's a lot more of a balance challenge when you do that. Anchor and press the back foot down onto the mat. You'll be getting a nice little stretch from that too, as well as it's a balance challenge. Now bring the right hand to the floor. Left hand will reach up to the ceiling. Look up at that left hand. There's an option here for those of you with experience. The back knee can come off the floor. Curl your toes under of the back foot. Hike up that back knee, straighten out the back leg. And you could stay looking up at that top hand all the while if it suits you. Big, expansive breath in, so a big one. Big breath out. You can start to lower that back hand now. Bring it down outside the left foot. Drop down the back knee. And we're coming back into child's pose. So ease back the body, taking the pressure off. And just give yourself a moment there. Something very similar now, opposite side. We're moving forwards first. We're going to come down onto our tummies. Inhale up into a cobra. Exhale back to downward dog or child's pose. Bum in the air. Head could be low. Could be child's pose too. Let's move ourselves forward into plank or you could be on all fours here. From plank or all fours, we're gonna bring our right foot forward. So if you need to drop the left knee, do. You bring the right foot forwards, relax the back foot, bring those hands up onto your hips. Make sure the back knee is comfy. Back foot points directly away from you. That will help your balance. And then what you're trying to do here is just tiny details around the hips and the pelvis to give you as good a stretch as you can get from this and as good a balance challenge. So the two hands on the hips, you'll notice the right hip being that little bit higher than the left. So drop, try it, try and drop the right hip. It's, it's tricky because they're, they're quite stuck in this position. Drop that right hip. Tuck down the tailbone behind you. I'd exaggerate what that looks like. That's the tailbone out. That's the tailbone down. It's like this little rotation of the pelvis. Now with the hands at your heart center, we're going to twist and spiral the spine, get lots of energy in there. So we're turning, we're turning, we're turning. The head is over the heart, heart over pelvis. Anchor the back foot down. You'll feel that strong stretch coming into the back leg when you do that. The right elbow is poking out behind you. And now we're gonna try and reach our arms out to roughly shoulder height. Keep the back foot as anchored down as you can manage here to get the best out of the stretch. And to challenge the balance, you close your eyes. 
it becomes all about your body and your breath in this moment when you're challenged that way. You're going to feel great after this. Open up the eyes. Let's bring the left hand to the floor. Right arm reaches up to the ceiling. Maybe you can look up at the right hand if that suits your neck. And maybe you're thinking, I'll try and lift the back knee. Curl the back toes under. Pop up that back knee. The straightest back leg that you can master here now. You want a really powerful back leg. Looking up, up, up to that top hand. If it's there for you, reach that top hand up. Big breath, you need it here. And then we're lowering down that right hand, bringing the right foot back to downward dog. That should kick it off for us. So once you're here in downward dog, the hips are high. The straightness is really in the back, not in the legs. Have a nice little bend in your knees so that you can get a little springy with the legs. Start pedaling. One heel will go to the floor and then the other. One heel will move towards the floor and the other. The bum is high. There's plenty of movement here now. It's not a stiff pose, it's not a stuck pose. It's very flowy. Drop the knees. Knees back to child's pose. And just give yourself a second here. Well done after that now. Roll out your wrists if you need to. Sometimes they're the places that can um, kind of talk back to you a bit in yoga if you haven't put pressure on the hands like that in a while. So just give them a good old wiggle out anytime they need it. Big breath in and out no matter where you are. And we get a beautiful easy side stretch now. So reach the hands forward, take the two hands to the right and get this big side stretch the whole way through that left side and you'll feel it. It's, there's no even need for me to tell you where that stretch is, it's so obvious. Let's slowly walk our hands over to the other side. So the hands kind of veer off the mat at this stage. We're going to bring the practice into more of a standing position now for the next section. So come all the way back to the centre. Slowly, slowly up we go. And we'll end up standing at the back of the mat. Seeing as that's where we are now anyway. Let's take the feet out nice and wide. Wag your tail or do whatever you need to do there wiggle-wise. Right, let's inhale, reach up. This is gonna get a touch more energetic now. Exhale, bring the hands all the way down. And we'll crawl our hands to the front of the mat. We're in plank position now. If plank is too much for you, drop the knees down. No problems there. Otherwise, straighten the legs. Point your heels to the wall behind you and push the ground away to get very powerful in the upper part of the body. Walk the feet up to the front of the mat. Inhale, reach the two arms up, widen out the feet as you go. And then exhale, drop those hands all the way down. There are options here. I want you to bring your feet to the back of the mat. Maybe you step them back one at a time. And maybe you think, I'll try and jump them and see how I get on. Usually that brings a smile. Bring yourself to downward dog again. Widen out your feet to the width of your mat, bend your knees and walk your hands back now to the back of the mat. Inhale, big breath in as you reach the arms up. Big breath out as you bring your hands back down again to the mat. Let's crawl forwards. Let's just do one more round of that. When you're in plank, you're strong, you're straight, you're pretty rigid here. There isn't a, a huge amount of flow and movement once you're in plank. Whew. Let's walk the feet forwards. Inhale, reach up, widen out the feet. You've got your options again now in a minute. Bring the hands all the way down to the mat and step or Try jumping those feet back, you call it. Lift the hips all the way up for downward dog. And we're starting to pedal again, thinking about our ankles, our calves, the backs of the legs really now. We're going, we're going to work into a strong hamstring stretch now and say. Really strong and really fun. Okay, walk those feet up to the middle of your mat. Bend your knees. Before we do our hamstring stretch, this is a challenging balance exercise. So often people think about balance as being one-legged or whatever. In this position, on the balls of your feet, balancing is a challenge. You can see you'd like to hold the floor, you'd like to hold your knees, whatever suits, do that. But what I'd like you to do to really create a big balance challenge is bring your feet 
as close together as you can. Bring your knees pretty close together. And if this just does not suit your knees, instead, I want you to double over your mat, cushion the mat, cushion your knees on something. And I want you to do that position to get the toes stretch instead. So just have the toes curled under in that way instead. Otherwise, if you're hanging in there, have the hands on the knees at this stage. And you can see my alignment now when you look at the video, but I want you to really position the head over the heart again, the heart over the, the hips. So not leaning forward so much anymore, rather straightening up as much as you can do. And when you straighten up, reach one arm forward and then the other. Perfect. This is a balance challenge, big one. You'll probably feel your feet moving, your body moving. Let's try and twist with that. Left arm reaches out behind you. So no matter what position you're, you're in now, the left arm is opening out behind you. You might notice if you glance down that one knee moves forward. Whoa, do you think you can keep both knees locked together and not moving away from each other at all? Hang in there. I know the ankles are getting tired. Just be a moment. Let's go around and back with the opposite arm. Rotate. You can look to the wall behind you. If there's someone with you right now, try and make them laugh. Push them over. <laughs> Brilliant. Come all the way back to the center. This is a biggie. We're going to stand up from here. <sighs> Bring yourself all the way up. Shake out the legs. Oh, and we'll stretch out those kind of little deeper hands. All right. The big hamstring stretch. Here it is. Step back with your left foot. This isn't like a warrior now, sorry, I'm not bringing you all the way back along your mat, but just step back enough so that you can keep your, your two feet pointing forwards. The back foot nearly always turns out to the side when you start this, but correct it, align it and point it forwards and you'll get more stretch out of, out of the position now. The two knees are bent starting off, okay? So, so there's softness in both knees. Pop your hands in your hips. And I want you, big difference now, instead of tucking the tailbone down, I actually want you sticking the tailbone out. When you stick your tailbone out, I want you to imagine someone's got a rope around your waist and they're trying to pull you back. And I want you to go with that. I want you to move your hips back as if you're trying to straighten the front leg. So you're trying to primarily move that right hip, particularly back as far as you can with a little tilt forwards of your upper body. The back knee is going to be bent quite a bit at this stage. Try and keep the back heel on the ground for the moment. Bring the arms behind your lower back. Just link them anyway at all. And now move the shoulder blades towards each other. Keep moving your hips back. So keep that action going, even though there's no actual movement happening now that you're here. Now the two arms together can reach up toward the sky behind you. Ooh, actively push your front foot to the floor. Actively push your back foot now to the floor and try and straighten out the back knee. Ooh, I hope you're feeling what I'm feeling because that's a pretty big stretch now to start off with. What would happen now if you just moved your hips a little left and a little right to get a bigger stretch? Usually you do. Ease off the arms, bend the front knee, bring the hands down to the mat. Step forwards with the left foot and allow yourself just to hang upside down for a minute. So now the two knees are bent. The hips, backside in particular, I want you to think about lifting the hips up away from the heels. Just give a little notice to the difference between both legs at the moment. It might be very subtle or it might be quite strong, the difference. You never know. Keep the neck soft. But like nod that head as if you're saying yes or rotate it as if you're saying no. Giving the head a bit of freedom can take a lot of pressure off the neck area. Keep lifting the hips as if you're trying to straighten your knees. Keep the heels pushing into the ground. Big, big flexibility moves and work for the backs of the legs. Okay, bend the knees deeply, 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 even deeper. Put your hands on your thighs or on your lap. Lift your head and chest. 
and let's get these quads talking. So press the hands in together now at this point. This is chair pose. This is a version of it. There are lots of different ones, but this one now just being here should make your quads, your thigh muscles feel like they're, you know, they're locking on and they're doing a little bit of work. I often just say this in the class that you're probably so sick of me saying something like this, but I'd often say now is a good time that I could like tell you a story. And you're probably thinking, no, it's not. Oh, anyway, let's lift the arms all the way up. I miss glasses. Oh, and then let's just shake that off. Ooh, the legs usually know they've done something at this stage. So that's really good. We'll do the, uh, the other hamstring now. So what I need now is the left foot in the front and the right foot behind. Now we want both heels on the floor, both feet pointing forward. So you do have to check that back foot because it will turn out. It's kind of like one of these things, if you don't look at it, it's gonna do, I won't say the wrong thing, but it's gonna align itself in the path of least resistance. We don't want that now. Bend both knees, hands on your hips, and again, maybe visualize that someone has looped something around your waist and they're pulling you back. So you need to be basically pulled back, the hips need to move back. And this leg will be so different to the other side, you think they're identical, but you'll find a big difference between the sides of your body with yoga. Hips are moving back. I like you're trying to straighten out that front knee, but you, you do not need to lock it straight. You don't need to do that to get this stretch. So just go back as far as you need to go with a little tilt forwards of your upper body. And then the hands catch onto each other behind you. The shoulder blades pull back towards each other. And at that stage, you know, you'd be feeling a pretty strong stretch. Start thinking of the left hip now. Try and move the left hip back even further. It's really tough. Push the left foot, the front foot down into the mat, into the floor. And we'll work on this now by trying to push the back foot into the floor. So that will straighten out your back knee. Then, if you can, lift those arms towards the ceiling. Keep moving your hips back, that's the secret here. So it's a really, it's a real backward movement. Nothing really leaning into the front foot, everything's almost like backing away from that front leg to go deep with that hamstring. Shoulder blades still working towards each other. Pushing energy into the back foot. Slowly leave that one go with the upper body. Bend the front knee. Bring those hands down to the floor. Step forwards. And then let yourself hang upside down. And again, when you're upside down, let everything from your waist up to your head soften. So all that stuff gets to do nothing. The main work here is on the hips, really. It's lifting the hips, trying to move the hips away from your heels and getting this beautiful long stretch up through the backs of the legs, the muscles of the backs of the legs. Do the knees have to be straight? Not one bit. I'd much rather you were in the position I'm in, if you can see, than a position where you have straight knees and you're just hanging your upper body down. That one doesn't work as well. It won't feel as good for you. Deep won't feel as good for you. Bend the knees deeply, coming back to that yucky chair pose. <laughs> Bring your hands onto your thighs. Slight difference now with chair pose. I want you to go out wider than your mat, okay? So feet off the mat wide. So I'll face you so you can see where I'm going with this. And I want you to slide your hands down, 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 down until you get your elbows onto your thighs. The feet point out a little bit, and uh, that's absolutely fine. Uh, let's go and lean over onto one leg and then lean over onto the other. If you're like me now and you've got a hot fire beside you, you should probably be feeling or noticing that life has just got a little bit hot all of a sudden. It is a tough one, this move. We're moving into a pose called goddess pose. It's a bit of a, a heater, a burning pose, but it's one that really stir up and churn up your energy. Okay, pause, get into the middle of that position. 
Take a big deep breath in and bring your hands to your heart center with your knees out quite wide. Keep pushing the knees out and hoping that your thighs are talking to you around now. If anyone wants to take that challenge on a little more, you're squatting a little bit lower, but each to their own. If I could see you, I'd be looking at you and saying, get lower, reach your arms forward, and then all the way up. Oh, that should feel pretty good. Shake things out. Let's go wider now with the legs. Don't worry, we're not squatting. We're doing a wide-legged forward bend, right? You don't need to do it, but I will need to do it. Tuck in my t-shirt. The last thing we need now online. When you go out wide with your legs, point your toes directly straight on, straight ahead. So if they were turned out, line yourself up. Little bend in the knees, stick your bum out behind you, tip forwards, maybe you can touch the floor. If you can, use it just to kind of go a little further, or maybe touching the floor is not an option. If that's not an option, elbows can just land onto the front of your thighs, no problem. So this is much nicer. This is a wide-legged forward fold and it's designed to go into the groin, go into the back of the hamstrings as well. The spine gets a really nice release from it all. So you could just turn your head a little to the left, turn it to the right with your body and just enjoy the slowness, the ease of it all. Roll the shoulders around a little bit. While you're kind of, when you're down there for a little while, you can usually move your legs out a little bit further. So you could just test that out for yourself. Another option, of course, is if you felt like that was just way too low for you, you could have like a little chair or yoga blocks or something that you could lean your hands on. So you can always play around with these things now as the weeks go on. Now, bend the knees. And heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, walk those feet back in a little closer. Do come up slowly though, because when the head has been underneath you for a while, it's just from a blood circulation point of view, you just want to come up nice and slow, so you don't get those kind of little dizzy spells or anything like that. Really slow. Now, these beautiful quads and these big flexors, the front of the muscle, the front of the thighs, well, they're the bits we want to really get at now. So coming down onto your tummy, it's easier from now on in, okay? So when you're down in your tummy, relax your head anywhere at all. Grab onto one foot. And once you've got a hold of the foot, don't pull the foot to you. Instead, keep the arm relaxed and start to squeeze your bum muscles to push the hips down towards your mat. And that will give you a really nice stretch through the front of the thighs. And you know, if you've been out walking, which hopefully everyone's been able to get out for a little bit of air in that. Usually the quads are the main muscle group with the glutes that, that kind of feel the effects of the walks. So this is just keeping them fresh for tomorrow. Have the head resting wherever suits. Just keep the glutes, the bum cheeks squeezed here. That'll really get into the quads just where you need them. Let it go nice and slow, and then we're swapping over to the opposite side. So head absolutely anywhere, knees fairly close together. And the main thing here is that you're giving your glutes, your bum cheeks, a good old squeeze, because that's what really gives you the stretch at the front of your hip. When you use the muscles at the back of the hip to give you the stretch at the front, it's far more effective. So way better than kind of pulling your foot in hard. You just need to grab the leg and let the hips do the rest. Goes without saying that if the knee joint was sore here, you back off that. You don't need to put any pressure on your knee joint. You get the stretch from other moves. You don't have to force this one. You're doing great. You have one lovely back stretch after this. 
ease your way out of that position come all the way up to all fours and then just let your head drop round your back up to the ceiling just give your back a good old stretch in that direction and then the opposite direction which is head up tail up it's basically cat cow and then we go for another couple of rounds of that head down tail down and you'll find that automatically your breathing kind of kicks in here. You could flow this breathing in as your head goes up. Breathing out as your head goes down. All the while just taking care of your spine, loosening it, bringing it up. Minding yourself, that's kind of the secret. Now for pigeon pose, which is a slightly deeper glute stretch than we did at the very start of the class. It's a nice one. On all fours, from all fours, bring your left knee up to touch your left hand. So same knee, same hand. Then we're going to bring that foot, that left foot across to the other side of the mat. Now the knee has to be happy, the front knee. So only bring it over that foot as far as it needs to go for you to keep, keep that calm in the knee joint. Move back with the back foot, all the way back. Now, here is where a block would come in handy, or if you haven't a block to hand, a pillow or a cushion would do. You slap that pillow or cushion or whatever or block underneath your left bum cheek, just for a tiny bit of support. And all going well, come down onto your elbows. And if you want to go a little further with this, you could kind of cozy down into a little, onto your hands or you could get your head low, as low as can be. But that can be quite a strong stretch for some people. The thing about yoga is we all will have our own tight spots and strong spots, weak spots, whatever. So, each one of these poses will affect all of you in a slightly different way. This is pigeon pose. It's a glute stretch back of the hip, bottom of the hip. It's a nice one just to spend a little bit of wind down time in. And if I can make one suggestion, it's to breathe into the place you feel stretching for you. So when you send your breath that way, the stretch will be just a little bit more intense, a little bit more strong, and will help you a little bit more in that area. Okay, let's ease back off of that position. To change, there are options. One of the easiest ways to change is to come up onto your hands, curl the back toes under, and just bring it back through to plank. You'll see it sounds hard, but actually, probably the clearest way to, to change it out. Now, back down onto your knees. Have your thing, cushion, pillow, whatever, block handy, and slide now your right knee up to touch your right hand. Move the right foot across the mat, only as far as you feel is comfortable for your right knee. It's going to be different for everyone. And then slot in your little block, your pillow, whatever you need. In, go, in it goes underneath your right bum cheek. Removing your back leg back as far as you feel it can go. And uh, then it's about making the upper body comfy. So come on down to your elbows if you can. And then come all the way down to as low a position as you feel you could tolerate or is comfortable or is good for you. Yeah. As much as some of the strong positions in yoga, yet they all kind of do feel hard, the, the ones where you're, where you're strengthening muscles, but um, and you kind of call it spade a spade, we all kind of have to push through those ones. 
Um, but these ones, these are stretches and these should just really feel as if you're getting a stretch in a muscle, but you could kind of relax into the position. There's no real, there's no raise in your heartbeat or you're not breathing heavy or hard or holding your breath here. Simply enjoying the stretch aspect of it all. And the wind down, it's always nice. Sometimes a stretch like this feels like you could kind of stay in it for a lot longer. Hopefully you're, that's the case for you. Some people would be like, can you get me out of this position? Come back off it nice and easy in your own time now. We're bringing our hands back to the mat, moving our cushion pillow or whatever. And last little plank. Want to do it with me? Bring it back through to plank if you can. Might be all fours if plank doesn't suit you. Last little downward dog now for your evening. And then bring your knees all the way down to the floor. Lovely. Come sit cross-legged when you're ready. And just do a little twist, a little rotation for the spine. Cross one hand over to the opposite knee. And just backhand finds the floor behind you as you do a gentle twist for the spine. Take a big breath in. Big breath out. Change sides. It's all very slow and gentle. Nice tall breath in. Breath out. Come all the way back to the center. Give your shoulders a little bit of movement. And then the bit that's I think what it's all about, what it, what it really means to do yoga is to find some stillness and ease and the body hopefully feels quite good after those moves. So get yourself comfortable, lie down onto the mat. You can dim down your lights and just listen to me as I take you through a few moments of relaxation to really help the body and the mind feel pretty good after what you've just been through and done. So get yourself sorted, lie down. As you're lying down and getting organized for a few moments of what we call Shavasana and yoga, we are just noticing how we are feeling after that. You can take a few moments just to pick the right position. You might need to move a shoulder blade or your hips up and down, fix your pants or whatever. You will figure it all out. We're going to keep our mind with our body for a little while longer now. We always come back to the breath. Valuing it, just being grateful for the health that you have this evening. The fact that you are at home able to do this. And 
notice something so simple like the air on your exposed skin, the air on your face or your hands. Notice the freshness and the coolness of the air as it enters your nose or mouth. Notice the sensation of the clothes on your skin. Notice how your body moves as you breathe. Everything perfect just as it is. any parts of your body that might be holding on to any tension. Can you move that part of the body to help it let off a bit of steam, to help it let go? We think about the entire front part of our body. And with our next breath in and breath out, we try and let the front of the body soften into the back of the body a little bit further. Notice the back of the body and the parts of our body that are in contact with the ground. With our next breath in and out, we try and let the back of the body get even closer to the ground. It's just you and your breath. Take a few moments all to yourself just to breathe and be.
And we draw a slightly longer, deeper breath into our body. One that encourages you to move a little bit again, whether it's feet or hands or face muscles. Take your own little movements now, your own little wake up stretches. Just to gather yourselves back together. So that in the moment when you're ready, you can roll onto your side and just stay there for a breath or two. Definitely take your time, but in your own time, you bring yourself all the way up to sitting. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight now. I hope that makes you feel good and I will see you again, hopefully, some of you on Saturday morning at 11. So until then, namaste. Have a gorgeous night's sleep and a lovely day tomorrow too. Bye-bye.